Greetings to you dear beloved and welcome to this video. It's a privilege again to be together with you to share the truth with God's word as point of departure of course. So let's continue our journey here uh, in this series called I would I would call it what the scripture says or what it seems to say to say on the one hand and on the other hand about truth and lie what is truth really and what is lie really so uh, I think by now you already have a good grasp of what truth is and what lie is in reality but let's continue to have it really drilled down for us that's very important so we switch to the slide this was the last one we already went through it uh, remember the long-term consequences uh, of uh, what you have done in the second situation that you have sta you, you stood your ground you uh, made a decision congruent with your heart and you had to pay for it on the short term but in the long term you will be rewarded um, handsomely of course and we know that because the great white throne is the next step for you if you were an unbeliever and didn't make it in the concentration camp in this example so let's continue we're going to look at examples from scripture now the first one god sends a lying spirit just for you to see and i think you already have a you, you know God already, but many people don't know God yet. I'm talking about Christians especially, religious people. And they cannot fathom that God would send a lying spirit. So let's read together. 1 Kings 22, verse 19 through 21 first. Micaiah replied, Not so. Hear the word of Yahweh. I saw Yahweh sitting on his throne and all the hosts of the heavens standing by him to his right and to his left. Yahweh said, Who shall entice Ahab, that's a king, King Ahab of the northern part of Israel, so that he may march up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? Now this one said thus and another one was saying thus. Then a spirit came forth, stood before Yahweh, and said, I myself shall entice them, or shall entice him, that's Ahab, King Ahab. And Yahweh asked him this, By what means? Let's continue in verse 22, 23. He, that spirit, so this spirit, he replied, I shall go forth, and I will become a false spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. His is a King Ahab again. So in the mouth of all the prophets of King Ahab. Then he, Yahweh, said, You shall entice, and moreover, you shall prevail. Go forth and do so. And now behold, Yahweh has bestowed a false spirit spirit into the mouth of all these your prophets for Yahweh himself has decreed evil concerning you and this was the true word that Micaiah the prophet of God gave to the king so very important so you see here proof scriptural proof that God sends a lying spirit that's possible of course next one god instructs the prophet samuel to tell a white lie have you heard of that one let's take a look first samuel 16 first one first one yahweh said to samuel how long will you mourn for saul since i have rejected him from being king over israel Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have selected among his sons a king for myself. 
says God to the prophet Samuel. Let's continue. Verse 2 and 3. Samuel replied to God, How can I go? If Saul, that's King Saul, hears of it, he will kill me. And Yahweh answered, Take a heifer, that's a, a cow, a red cow, take a heifer of the herd in your hand and say, I have come to sacrifice to Yahweh. And then the instruction was, you must invite Jesse to the sacrifice and then I shall make known to you what you should do. You must anoint for me the one whom I shall designate to you. There you have it. God instructing Samuel to tell a white lie. That means that this was more like a distraction because the real reason that Samuel came there was to anoint one of the sons of Jesse, and we know who that is, that's David, one of Jesse's sons, to be king over Israel. And of course, Samuel knew that Saul would kill him if, Samuel would, if Saul would hear about that. So God instructs Samuel to tell a white lie. So take with you a heifer, okay, and then tell the people, I have come to sacrifice to Yahweh. That was not the real reason Samuel went there. But that was an instruction. Why? Why did God do that? Because it's about using wisdom. Of course, using wisdom. So was God standing in the truth? Of course, by the time. And Samuel also executing God's instructions. Of course. They were standing in the truth because it was about the not about the means as such but about the outcome the outcome should be that david should be anointed to be king over israel in the future that was the outcome and the means was okay uh take a heifer with you and sacrifice it and of course invite Jesse and his sons so that they are there immediately as using wisdom okay but there is a third one let's continue Jesus himself as the son of the God he acted and he feigned to again to elicit a certain outcome that's the point it's about wisdom using wisdom in that sense let's read Luke 24, verse 13 through 17. And lo, two of them, two of the disciples of Jesus, in the same day were going into a village which is named Emmaus, Emmaus, 60 stadia away from Jerusalem. And they conversed with one another concerning all of these things which have befallen. And it occurred in their conversation and discussion, Jesus himself also, drawing near, went together with, him, with them. Yet their eyes were held so as not to recognize him. That means that he changed his outward look. That's the point. He changed how he looks. So he, he looked like a different man. That's the point. Now he said to them, and remember that he could do that easily because he already had a glorified body. So that's easy. Okay. He said to them, what words are these which you are uh, bandying one with another while walking? Did he hear the word, the words that they were talking? Yes, of course. And still he's asking why to elicit a reaction. He wanted to make that conversation go. Because he wanted to go a certain direction within that conversation. Let's continue. Verse 17 to 19. And they stood with a sad countenance. Now answering, the one named Cleopas, Cleopas said to him, You are sojourning alone in Jerusalem and didn't know what things are occurring in her in these days. And he, that's Jesus, said to them, Which? Did Jesus know 
<laughs> Jesus was the center point, the center focus of attention of what happened that day. And he still asked which, of course, because he knew that the man didn't recognize him. He changed himself. So he played along. Is that lying on the surface? Yes, it is. It's doing as if. It's acting. That is lying. However, again, it's still standing in the truth. It's very important to, to distinguish. We continue. So Jesus said to them, which? Which things? Now they say to him, those concerning Jesus the Nazarene, a man who came to be a prophet, powerful in work and in word, in front of God and the entire people. It continues in verse 28, 29. So a little jump a little, make a little jump here. And they draw near to the village where they went. And what happens? He, that's Jesus, does as though he were going further. He was acting or feigning again. So he feigned as if he were going further while they had to go that way. He went that way. That's how he did as if. But again, to elicit a reaction from the, from the two guys to invite him in their home. Because that's the, that was the goal. And Jesus played along. And then, as a reaction indeed, they urged him saying, Remain with us, for it is toward dusk and the day is, has already declined. And he entered to remain together with them. And you know the story, he, bre he, he broke the bread and then by, while doing that he changed his outward looking and then they recognized him and then he disappeared just like that. But the point is that he acted at least twice by saying which as if he didn't know what happened that day and he did as though he were going further. You see the point. So this is important to just remember. This is different than you have learned in church. That's the point. Than you have been taught in church. This is different. Okay. So let's go to some lessons learned. So as you have witnessed in this life case, in the previous one of course, someone could very well tell the truth while standing in the lie and standing in the lie is what's really uh what's it all about what it is all about it's standing in the lie you can tell the truth but that's on the surface it's about the heart that's the whole point so you can stand in the lie while, te while telling the truth. And of course, just to be sure it's understood, someone could very well tell a lie, a white lie, or, or just a lie, while standing in the truth. Because their heart is, uh, the out is, is uh, supporting their decision. Okay. So truth is not just telling the truth but it is about our heart our deep motivations i hope you see that by now we already know that god looks at our heart right that's what it's all about when our conscience resonates with helping others in dire need this means our heart is in it to help them if we then go, in that case, against our heart, then we betray ourselves. We betray our conscience and we betray our heart. That means we betray ourselves. I hope you see that now. We continue. We can only betray ourselves if we do not love ourselves. That's the only cause, relative cause, of course. 
possible situations we pursue something or someone because of external pressure we have a job only to earn money not because it is our passion and we like it at all no only to earn money this happens very often we want to be a singer as an example because they get much honor and praise and attention are these good triggers no they are bad triggers or we are looking to become rich because there lies our success in life and we know that is not the case wrong trigger this is an example so in these cases we are not true to our real selves therefore we stand in the lie can you now see why more than 50% of all humans in the world here on earth are standing in the lie and i think way more than 50% they are standing in the lie instead of the truth because again to stand in the truth will mean that you will uh, suffer pain in the short term the pain of discipline but you will gain in the long term way more than the other way around so why do we lie to ourselves in case of the above situations these examples it's lack of love for ourselves that's the reason so the result is none of these situations give us inner happiness they are deceptive triggers aimed toward the short term so in the short term you are aiming sometimes even unconsciously you're aiming to make it easy for yourself to pursue the easy path the path of the majority so we are true to our heart if we love ourselves you can see that right so possible situations and other examples we pursue leadership in our life so that we stand for our decisions with our heart our heart is in our decisions we have a job that reflects our passion and makes us happy actually happy we aim to become an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur by building and doing what we always loved in life and that starts with knowing our passion first of course and the fourth one we are looking to a fulfilling life that caters to our inner peace you see the difference here it's about our happiness it's about our heart that's the point in these cases we are true to ourselves therefore we stand in the truth so above situations they give us inner joy and are aimed toward the long term not the short term in the short term we will suffer the pain of discipline and this is part of life this is part of the the training camp so to speak in this life before the resurrection that is the point so i want to end with this uh, slide um and uh i will continue of course the less some lessons learned uh in the next video i thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you next time